For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the grace of thee is love. Pertains to Hillview, that one's different, man. This is this has been on the bucket list since day one, day one. And there's a Hillview Manor is located in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, and which is about an hour north of Pittsburgh. I grew up in Newcastle. Um, I saw this building every day. Uh, I went to high school less than a half a mile away from here, and and that's part of why uh, this has been on the bucket list since day one. But another reason it's been on the bucket list is I was there. Um, I had relatives who lived there. I had several relatives who died there. And so it's, it's, it's very personal uh, to me because I have seen them. Hillview Manor opened its doors on Tuesday, October 19th, 1926. It was then known as the Lawrence County Home for the Aged, also known as the Poor House or Poor Farm, and housed the county's mentally ill, severely destitute, and elderly residents that didn't have any known family. The home continued to operate for many years, and in the latter half of the 1960s, it was remodeled and slowly changed into a nursing center. And, after several remodels and expansions, it was renamed as Hillview Manor in March of 1977. Hillview Manor closed its doors in 2004 due to financial constraints. As we drove up to Hillview Manor on the night of our investigation, all of the history of the building, the area, and our family connection to the property was foremost on our minds. After taking a tour of the building with the staff, we set out to investigate this iconic location. It was just Emily, myself, and two family members, Linda and Al, against this 85,000 square foot monolith of mystery. During our initial tour, there were two areas where the spiritual energy was keenly felt. For Emily, it was in the North Wing, for Linda, it was on the third floor, in the former room of a resident named John. So we split up and began our investigation of Hillview Manor. Before we even arrived on the third floor, our stationary camera had already recorded some activity. We were drawn to the room of a former resident named John. He was apparently very fond of reading his Bible, which remains in the room today. We were told that he likes having it read to him, so we decided to read a few passages. Charity, envieth not. Charity, vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not have, behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. He seems to have heard us, as he did respond. After we read another verse, we asked him if he liked the verse that we had just read, and he responded again. Meanwhile, two floors below in the north wing, Emily and Al were experiencing some activity of their own, and it was captured on our stationary camera. Is the magnetic field indicator? Yes. Flashlight. Oh, we've got the plasma. Emily was soon drawn to room 131, and they went in to investigate further. While they were discussing how big the room is, they received an unwelcoming EVP, issuing a command. It was a higher-end room, right? There's no question about that. Yeah. 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 
There's the, like the closet area. Exactly three minutes after receiving this message, the REM pod out in the hallway starts to go off, and it goes off for over two minutes. Is this the same spirit that wanted us to leave this room just three minutes before? Is this spirit setting off our equipment in the hallway so that we will leave his room and go check on it? As they are out in the hallway investigating what could cause the REM pod to go off like that, they are startled by a loud bang. What they discover is that a medical book has fallen off the shelf behind the nurse's station. While it happened just to the left of our camera, we did not capture it falling because it is around the corner in the nurse's station, which is set back from the hallway. We also do not have any video or photos of this book on the shelf before it fell, but we do know that it was on this shelf, until it wasn't. What makes this even more interesting is that you can clearly hear the book slide across the shelf before it falls to the ground. Was this the same spirit trying to get our attention again? We don't know exactly who was responsible, but we may have gotten a confession shortly afterwards on our spirit box. At the nursery station, I wanted to know who made the book fall. At the nursery station, I wanted to know who made the book fall. Meanwhile, on the third floor, Linda and I were still investigating. I had just left my camera in a former rec room when we picked up a voice making a request of me. And I did come back. And, as we were leaving the area, the spirit may have shown its appreciation. This was a, this looks like it was a hot golf ball. There were several events that are very common in this location. The first of which being light anomalies. Almost every one of our cameras caught a barrage of these at one point or another during the night. We also captured a lot of bangs and a lot of footsteps. We feel a lot of this is the residual energy of the people who lived and died in this building over its almost 80 years of use. This energy doesn't react to us or what we're doing or saying. A little later, we made our way to one of the more historically active rooms on the second floor. This room was the former home of a blind resident. Unbeknownst to us at the time, a spirit had already invited us to this part of the building earlier in the night. We spent about 20 minutes in this room without capturing any evidence. As we were leaving, I placed our motion-activated trail camera back in the room, when it caught this. Although the camera is jiggling at first, having just been set down, 
When we slow down the footage, you can clearly see that the chair is not moving at the beginning of this clip. Then, a light anomaly shoots through it and the chair begins to move. This is an awesome capture. The chapel is another hotspot for activity at Hillview Manor. We spent a lot of time in there, and while we did experience some energy, we did not catch any evidence in this area, until we announced we were leaving. We're gonna leave. Did you hear something? Not here. Thanks. As we were finishing up our sweep of the entire first floor, Emily stopped into the section of the building where they display many of the relics they have collected over the years. It was at this time that I felt an itching and burning sensation on my back. I assumed it was a bug bite. Then Emily checked and discovered a long scratch across my lower back. I had not scratched my back and was wearing three layers of clothing over that part of my body. Twenty minutes later, the scratch was completely gone, but the itching and burning feeling remained well into the next day. Was this paranormal? Spirits have been known to scratch people. We were rolling on our digital recorder when we discovered the scratch, and it sounds like a spirit was very quick to blame me for it. Yeah, it's definitely marked there. Like it scratched? Uh, that's what it looks like. Uh -huh. Towards the end of our investigation, we went back to the cafeteria. Once we sat down, I realized I needed to change the infrared light battery on my camera. As I am doing this, the camera's audio picked up one of the most common sounds heard in this room. <laughs> Emily is sitting 10 feet from the piano when this sound is made. I'm 20 feet away. There is no one else in the room. What is oddest about this is that neither of us heard the sound at the time. This piano playing is one of the most common occurrences at Hillview Manor. Several minutes later, we attempted to contact members of our family who had died in this building. It was during this attempt that we picked up a distant scream. Anything that you would like to tell your family who loved you who still tell stories about you. Anything that you would like to tell your family who loved you, who still tell stories about you. Our final stop of the night was to go back to the third floor. While we did not experience the level of activity that we had before, we did capture one last EVP that sounds like it's giving us advice. It starts by saying you should, but we can't make out the rest. Can you? As we were tearing down our cameras on the second floor, Emily kept the camera rolling as she carried it to the cafeteria side to retrieve our other cameras. After getting our camera in the hallway, we entered the cafeteria to retrieve our trail camera. At that time, the camera Emily was carrying picked up something chilling. Behind Emily, a large shadow of a person appears for a moment or two before vanishing into the darkness. It even appears to grow as it moves toward her, and its right arm even seems to reach out to her. So, the big question here is, is this Emily's shadow? As we always do, let's try and debunk this. First, is this shadow being generated by the infrared light on the camera that Emily is holding? We do not believe so. The reason this shadow stuck out to us is that it just doesn't look like the shadows that these infrared lights create. Here is an example of Emily's shadow from this exact same camera a little earlier. It's not as dark of a shadow as this one. Also, the angle of the light doesn't work. This light is very close to her body. It would have to be at least a foot out in front of her to cast a full body shadow like this one. Another important thing to consider here is that the IR light Emily is carrying is shining light over her left shoulder. The bulk of this shadow figure can be seen from the right side. 
If the infrared light Emily is carrying was casting this shadow, it would be of her left side. So that leads to the next question. Is the light coming from one of the other cameras? There are two other cameras in this room, the one I am carrying from the hallway and the trail camera that's set up in the room. As you can see in this clip, the camera and the infrared light from the camera I am carrying are facing front and Emily is behind me. So that infrared light is out as the source of the shadow. The trail camera in this room does have a small infrared light. However, several moments after this shadow is captured, Emily enters the frame of the trail camera. It is not casting her shadow on the wall. If the shadow were being caused by this camera's infrared light, the shadow would still be there. So, we have concluded that none of our infrared lights are causing this shadow. There is one other source of infrared light in this room. It is from the security system cameras for the building. One is mounted just above the window next to where we have our trail camera. We do not feel this is the source of the shadow either, once again due to the angle. The light source from this camera is above Emily. If this were casting the shadow, it would appear closer to the floor, not on the ceiling. Lastly, let's look at the shadow itself. It is translucent in some areas and solid in others. The exit sign in the background can be seen through the neck, but the head, shoulder, and arm completely block out the wall and the door frame. The shadow shape is also not affected by the shape and curves of the wall in the background, placing it in front of the wall, not against it. For all those reasons I've just reviewed, we simply cannot debunk this. We cannot say for certain what this is, but we feel we can say what it isn't. We feel this is not Emily's shadow. Haunted Hillview Manor is an iconic haunted location that was on our bucket list since day one. Having a personal connection to this building and the area made our trip there so much more impactful. When I was there many years ago visiting family, I remember thinking to myself how lonely all the residents looked and how they probably longed for visitors. And now, all these years later, Haunted Hillview Manor and its reputation will ensure that these residents that remain will continue to receive visitors for many years to come.